Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third grade. My name is Mrs. Nix, and I am so excited to be here with you today to help you become an amazing thinker, reader, and writer. So I was just looking at this story. This one is called Grandfather Ting's Story. It's a tale told with tangrams. Did you know that you could tell a story using tangrams? I thought we used those only in math. Ha, huh. but look at this. You can make your own characters just by following some of the directions in this particular story. If you enjoy getting a little bit of your math manipulatives in with a great story, this is a wonderful book to check out. How do you check it out? Well, you can do it either at your local um, county library or you can go online and check it out through Sora. Speaking of Sora, here in Fresno Unified, we love to have a little friendly competition, right? So let's look and see who checked out the most. The number three uh, spot for top checkouts goes to Baird Middle School. So good job, explorers. I see you right here. Great job. Keep up the great work and checking out those books. The easiest way to put your name on this list is just that, checking out books. Speaking of other things that you might like to or enjoy to do during these cold uh, winter months would be one of our activity books. Here at PBS, if you send me a letter to the address that is listed below on your screen, I'll make sure that you get one of these really fun activity books filled with puzzles and word searches, connect the dots, all sorts of fun things to keep your mind busy during these uh, winter months that are a little on the chilly side. So don't forget to include your return address so that I can make sure that that gets out to you. Um, on your letter, if you'll let me know maybe a book that you've been reading or you can tell me something you've been learning in school or something you've learned here on PBS, that would be awesome. Okay, let's get started with today. I have three things that we're gonna do. We're gonna look at prefixes, um, we're gonna look at syllables, and we're gonna finish off with root words. Are you ready to start? Okay, let's warm up those brains by looking at our high frequency words. We've been practicing these all week and I know that you're doing a great job with them. So let's read them. Here we go. Of, off, once, one, only, open, other, or, out, an hour. Nicely done. Okay, today we're gonna look at these two. Only and open. Only is O-N-L-Y, and, the and then open is O-P-E-N. So if you need to practice these, jot them down. All right, help me put them in to our sentences. So help, help me read them. Let me hear you read big and loud. Can you please mm the door for me? Let's read our second one. There are mm a few weeks until break. Hmm, let's look at that first one. Can you please only the door for me? Hmm, that doesn't make sense. How about open? Can you open the door for me? Nice. There are only a few weeks until break. Are you excited about um, our holiday break, our winter break? Yeah, me too. I have some great books that are planned for us to get to read. Um, okay, I wanna finish, or I wanna finish up this piece right here, looking at, I've got a couple of words. We're working on those syllables and breaking our words into smaller chunks so that we can sound them out. And so one of the patterns that I wanna talk about happens to deal with kind of the end of our word. We're looking for a vowel consonant E pattern. Now that E at the end makes that vowel say its name. It makes it a long vowel sound most of the time. So if I were to look at this word and I say, ooh, it's a really long word, I can actually break it into, into smaller parts. So the first thing we do when we're talking about our syllables is we're looking for those first two vowels, 
But today we're focusing on that vowel consonant E at the end. So I put a little line under it so we can kind of see it. But remember, we're looking for our vowels and we're going to split in between our, our vowels. So usually there are, um, when we see two consonants, um, we'll split in the middle. Now I know that PL is a consonant blend, so pleat is going to stay as a single syllable. And so then we have come pleat, come pleat. And then we can do the same thing over here. If this was a word, we're just pretending that we can't read it out loud, but that's okay. We're gonna pretend if we didn't know how to read that word, we can use some of those clues. So again, putting the vowels in red, I'm looking, I've got that vowel consonant E at the end. Now this all stays together. And I know that this vowel is gonna say its name. So I've got wake, and here's my first syllable, uh, awake, awake. Nicely done, okay. The second thing I want us to look at are our prefixes. This week we're working on miss, pre, and dis. Now these are just uh, letters that are added to the beginning of a word to change the meaning. And how does that happen? Well, each of these prefixes have their own meaning. For example, miss means bad or wrong, and pre means before, and dis means not. So how do we change the meaning of a word? Okay, well, we have to start with a word. So let's look here. A base word is simply that. It's a word that can stand on its own. I've got three of them today. Spell, load, and believe. Now, if I put, if I have spell, we know how to spell a word, right? If I take the prefix miss, and I put it with spell, now I have a new word, and this is misspell. So how does that change the meaning? If this means that I'm spelling the word, and this is misspell, what does miss mean again? It's bad or wrong, so I've spelled it incorrectly. So if I said the word misspell, oh, I misspelled your name, that would simply mean I spelled it wrong. How about this one, load, like I'm going to load up um, the washing machine. Well, if I put pre in front of it, I preload, that just means that I'm putting some things in there earlier, right? I'm doing it before, I've got a little preload. And then finally, dis means not. So believe means that um, we, well, we will believe it. We think something is true. Then to disbelieve, we think that it's not true. We don't believe it. All right, nicely done. Let's look and see what do these look like in practice. So if I'm thinking about some of those prefixes, um, here it just says, read each of the words and circle the word that has a prefix and then we're gonna write the meaning. Now I, oops, went ahead and I wrote some of my definitions ahead of time so that we can get through here, but at home, what you would be doing is looking to see, you're gonna read your words and circle the word that has the prefix. So let's look for the prefix. So we've got problem, paper, or preheat. And so which one has a prefix? Yes, preheat, and it's got that pre. What does pre mean? Do you remember? That's right, it means before. So what would this mean? It would simply mean we're gonna heat it up before. Okay, daily, distrust, and darling. Which one has the prefix? Do you see it? Yes, distrust. It's got that D-I-S. What does D-I-S mean again? That's right, it means not. So, if I were to say, what does this mean? I would say, well, I do not trust someone or something. How about memory, misspell, and messy? Oh, you guys got it, because we just talked about it, misspell. Miss means not. So I spelled it wrong, right? Okay, excellent job. Let's go through and let's talk about um, circling the letters that make that vowel consonant uh, E pattern in that final syllable of a word. We're gonna do just a couple here. So read with me. I think we will retake the photos. Do you see any words that have that 
vowel consonant E at the end. Right here, absolutely. So retake has that vowel consonant E. So the A-K-E goes with that final syllable. So we have re-take, just like that. I had to fly in an airplane last year. Do you see any of those words with that vowel consonant E? Right here, yes, airplane. All right, so then I know that A-N-E makes that final syllable so I know I'm gonna split right here because plane is all gonna go together, A-N-E. Nicely done. Let's do one more. When do you think our friends will arrive? All right, so I'm coming to a word right here. It's got the E at the end. I've got an I-V-E, so vowel consonant E. So I know that here's my word. I know that I-V-E is gonna say the long vowel I've got my vowels here at the front, so I'm gonna split it right here. Arrive, arrive. Nicely done, excellent. Okay, let's finish off today with our root words. Okay, root words are simply that. They're just the smallest form of a word, okay? There's no prefixes or suffixes that have been added to it. Now, as you get a little bit older in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, you're gonna see that you can really take down and find little tiny bits and parts that are called root words. Um, so just be prepared. You're gonna learn a lot more as we go along. This is just to get us started. So researchers tested a group of tree frogs. And if I look at this word researchers, and I wanna break it down and find the smallest word, the smallest or the simplest form of the word, is chers a word? No. Is arch a word that we need out of here? Nope. Research would be our simplest form. And what does research mean? Well, I went and I looked it up in, a, in the dictionary and it says it's a careful study and investigation for the purpose of discovering and explaining new knowledge. So we're having to look up something that's new to be able to explain it. And by adding the ERS, what does that actually mean? Well, research is the thing that the people are doing. They're going and they're finding information and the researchers are the people that are finding that information. So thinking about it, remember we're always working on thinking and paying attention to what we're reading. So see if you can find some words and find some root words in what you're reading at home. All right, so I just wanna say thank you for hanging out with me today as you're getting ready for school. And remember, you are responsible for your learning success. So listen, ask questions, and share ideas because together we can do so much more, like figuring out what those root words are and understanding what their meanings are. I wanna say have a fantastic day I can't wait to see you back here at PBS tomorrow. Have a good one. Say hi to all of your teachers and have a nice day. Bye-bye.